Okay, we'll continue with our media availabilities from Sonoma Raceway today. We're now joined by Kyle Larson, driver of the number 42 Target Chevrolet for Chip Ganassi Racing. Kyle, you had a pretty great Father's Day last weekend, taking home your second win of the season and second consecutive at Michigan and overtaking the Monster Energy Series standings lead. Now here you are at your home track as the leader of the pack. How will you um, use that momentum to play into this weekend? Uh, yeah, we definitely have some really, really good momentum going for me in all different types of motorsports right now. So um, it's uh, been a lot of fun the last you know, week or so winning a lot of a lot of races and different cars. So um, you know, hopefully we can come here and you know, it's a totally different <laughs> racetrack than what I've been on uh, you know, this year. So i um, looking forward to it though. I always enjoy coming to Sonoma and, and hanging out uh, in the Napa Valley uh, with some friends and, and uh, coming to do road course racing is, is always fun too. And I feel like I've gotten better at it over the last uh, couple of years and you know, hopefully we can you know, qualify good and have a good race. Awesome. We will now open it up to questions. We will bring a mic to you if you can please state your name and affiliation. Any questions for Kyle? Right back to there to Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio. Kyle, a lot of the young drivers, and I don't know how you feel, maybe you feel better about this, they don't really know what to expect on the road course. You talk to Chase Elliott, or he's like, I don't really know. You know, I feel confident, but uh, I wonder how you feel at the kind of young bunch of drivers at a road course like this and whether you feel confident coming to this track. Yeah, I'm always I'm always pretty confident when I go to, you know, here or Watkins Glen. Um, I feel like these places feel most similar to a sprint car than you know, our, our typical ovals do. So um, I, I feel like I can feel the car better at these places. And, and you know, I, I don't have a ton of great finishes, but I, I typically run up front at this race. Um, I, from what I remember about this race last year, I ran, I don't know, fifth to seventh or eighth the whole time and then uh, got caught on pit road or, or we sped and then um, <coughs> had to make that up at the end of the race. So. Didn't get the finish that we deserved last year, but always run up front. So, yeah, I mean, I, I love coming to these road courses. I think it kind of throws another element into it, and, and these places are kind of, you know, driver's racetracks. I think that's why you see, like, Almondinger, you know, run good here, um, and, and those guys is because you can make up for, you know, your car not handling right. Lewis, go ahead. Lewis Frank of Reuters. Um, Earlier, Clint Boyer was in here, and we talked about the different, you know, rules for the races. This week, Sunday, will be unlike years past. Have you discussed it with your crew chief, crew, and how do you think the race will play out under the new rules versus last previous years? Yeah, I mean, I think just the less downforce um, just make it harder to drive. You know, I think about the S's, and they're really, really fast, and I remember struggling through there last year. And, and last year was less downforce than the previous season, so I think it'll just be another step of being hard to drive and uh, a lot of fun. Jeff? Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com. You said that the cars on the road courses here, are they feel more like a sprint car to you than on an oval. Why Why is that exactly? Um, on the ovals, you know, we have the no ride height rules, so they're just stuck to the racetrack, and they're pretty rigid and don't move around a whole lot, where, you know, sprint cars, you know, kind of flex around, and you can feel the suspension a lot more, and, um, I mean, you can look at all the pictures and stuff of the stock cars going around here. I mean, the front ends are flying in the air, and there's a lot of movement, so um, it just feel like you can feel the grip better, um, so I, I think that's why it kind of, I, I, I feel more comfortable, I guess, uh, coming. I, I don't want to say I'm more comfortable coming to a road course than Oval, but I, I feel like I can f understand and feel the car better when I come here. I'll go all the way in the back. Hi, Kyle. Mark Dembski, Fox 40 out of Sacramento. Uh, Two-part question. One is, you know, have you thought about being the points leader here at, at, at your home track and what that means to you? And the second part is, is, you know, with the success that you've had this year, and some of these other guys that have you either have retired or are retiring at the end of the year, are you putting like the new face kind of on NASCAR going forward? Yeah, being the point leader uh, coming home to California is a, a cool thing. Um, I don't know, but 
Yeah, I mean, anytime you can be the point leader is, is fun, but uh, to get it back before we come come home is cool. Um, and then, you know, we've been running good. A lot of us young guys have been running good this year, so it's it's a great time for us all to kind of step up and, and um, you know, show the sport and, and the fans that, um, you know, we can take it over, or not, or not necessarily take it over, but um, do a good job for the sport and be be a face for NASCAR. I think, um, you know, myself and Chase and Blaney, uh, Suarez, Jones, um, Austin Dillon, Stenhouse, we're all, you know, under under 30. Logano's still, you know, really young. So um, I think with Dale Jr. retiring this year, we're still in a, a good spot or, or better spot um, with him retiring because I think it's a great opportunity for all of us. Brant. Brant James, USA Today Sports. Referencing uh, the, the points lead again, I mean, you're locked in for the for the postseason, but that the battle you're having with Martin and, you know, trying to accumulate playoff points, is, is that keep it fresh, you know, keep you motivated? And is there value in that back and forth as you head toward the fall? Yeah, no doubt. Um, the regular season points have been a um, big priority of mine because, you know, it pays 15 points to be the leader uh, at the end of Michigan, or sorry, Richmond. Um, which is a big deal, you know, it's like one in three races. Uh, I think it goes like 15, 10, and then maybe drops by one down. I, I'm not sure how exactly it works, but um, you know, 15 bonus points would be huge. So trying to stay as consistent as I can and, and race hard every race. Um, you know, I think in the previous points format, you know, if you get a win early on, you can kind of cruise a little bit and, and uh, you know, lose your drive on, on wanting to win as much. So. Um, you know, now with the the bonus points on the line every week, it's a, a big deal to run up front all throughout the races. And the LSR? Hi, Bill Sosa with the Napa Valley Register. You are pretty well known for video games, simulators, all that sort of thing. Have you spent any time at all simulating this racetrack because it's so different from running on the ovals? Um, I would say I was big into video games and stuff like that when I was a little bit younger. I don't do it a whole lot anymore. Um, especially with having Owen, you know, I don't have time for that. Um, and I've been racing all week. So, no, I haven't spent any time in a, on a simulator uh, getting ready for Sonoma. I've watched a little bit of video and, and gone over notes before I just came in here on, you know, pr you know history of, uh, you know, balance that I felt and going over what gears to be in and stuff like that. But um, this is my fourth year in Cup, so I kind of you know, remember um, – you know things about this racetrack, uh, where you know probably the first, well definitely the first year I was a rookie, and then you know even the second year you kind of forget a lot of the stuff you learn. So um, now being my fourth time around, I, I I feel like I've learned the characteristics of this place, and um, you know we'll see. And when practice starts, but I don't I don't think it takes me too long to get fired up for a road course. Over here. Hi Kyle, uh, Peter Fournier with the Press Democrat. Uh, since you've been the uh, in first in the point standings, have you heard any increased attention from your friends, family, or uh, media in Sacramento and the Northern California a area? Um, no, I mean, I always feel like whenever we get ready for this race, I get a lot of media stuff um, just because it's my home track. It doesn't matter if you know, I'm the point leader or back when I was probably 24th in points at this time. So um, it's just uh, I always look forward to coming out west. Um, great food. Uh, we did some wine tasting last couple of days. Um, had a nice little dinner at the Abre Ranch yesterday. So it's just a uh, Sonoma is always kind of spent as a, a vacation, and uh, with a little bit of racing involved as well. So um, it's fun. Any other questions right here in the back? Kyle, though, with the stage racing now uh, at this track, that's going to change a lot of the dynamics from a you know maybe a two stop a race to maybe a four stop. So there's a lot more aggressiveness and a lot more. Um, that could happen. What's your thoughts on going to, with the multiple stops? Yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't thought about um, really the way stage racing is going to affect the, the race here yet. Um, that was a good point because, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't think it would turn into a four-stop race, but you know, possibly you know, a, a three-stop race rather than you know, typically being a two-stop race. But I, I don't know. I'd have to talk to the to the engineers, they're smart, and I just pit when they tell me to pit. <laughs> Woody, go ahead. Woody came with MRN. Speaking of that, you go to a completely different place next week in Daytona. Now that you've got a couple of super speedways under your belt in terms of stage racing, does the strategy there take on a little bit of a different aspect than other tracks? Uh, the super speedways? Yeah. Um, 
No, I, I, I don't think so. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's much different than, than like a, a track that's been newly repaved or something where the tires don't fall off. You know, the pace is always up. Um, you got some teams that, you know, try and still, you know, play it to gain stage points, but then you also have teams that want to position themselves for, you know, dumping as little as much fuel as they can to, you know, for that last stop. So it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think stage racing has been too, too crazy different at those, at those tracks. All the way in the back again. Kyle, uh, we talked about your success, but, you know, in your terms, why have you been winning races or finishing second six times? Yeah, I mean, what, you know, what's been behind the success in, in your eyes right now? I think on the NASCAR side of things, um, I think our race cars have just gotten a, a lot better uh, this year. Uh, they were pretty good, you know, halfway through to end last year, but throughout the offseason, we just got our, our cars a lot better, and um, it's allowed me to not probably overdrive as much and make mistakes. So um, that part of it's been cool, you know, driving fast race cars and being a contender uh, every week, you know, in, in this series is a big deal. So, um, you know, we've ran up front a lot this year and, and even, you know, my dirt stuff, I've, I've ran up front and contended for wins every time I've raced. So it's just been a, a really, really fun year. In the middle again. Donna Beth Wildman, Martinez News Gazette, and Benicia Harrell. Um, the year before he retired, Jeff Gordon picked you out uh, at the Daytona 500 as the new kid to watch. And you've had some really good success. I wondered, first of all, did you know that early on that he had his eye on you? And second, have you talked to him since he retired about uh, the kind of success you're having? Um, I knew Jeff was a big supporter of mine before I ever raced. A stock car. Um, you know, I, I had a good year in 2011, uh, racing USAC and stuff like that throughout the Midwest. And um, you know, he talked very highly of me then, and and you know, as well as like Tony Stewart and Casey Kane, um, and that kind of got my my name noticed in North Carolina, and, and got some race teams paying attention to me, and eventually got me hired by Chip. So um, yeah, I've always known Jeff's been a big supporter of mine, and. Uh, it's been cool to to see him in the broadcast booth, you know, talking about me, and um, you know, he's he was you know the guy that I cheered for the most growing up, and uh, to have somebody that I got to cheer for, and then eventually race with, and then also have him talking highly of me is a a cool thing. So, um, yeah, I've learned I've learned a lot from him, and uh, he's definitely been a a good uh, role model for sure. Any final questions for Kyle? All right, Kyle, thank you. Have Thanks. fun this weekend.